Now, Jay, I don't, I don't think you're in the in the thing right now, but it is Jay Spies. I don't think it's Spies. I think it's Spies. Jay. But anyways, Jay on YouTube. We have an electrically heated 20-gallon two-vessel CIP cart for our brewery in planning. Our cart differs from yours in that it can be moved to the source for cleaning and also that it does not have a city water inlet. We will probably store caustic in the heated tank and parasitic acid in the non-heated tank. Since the heated tank has a PID, my plan was to preheat it on cleaning days ahead of time then use our 140 degree external hot water source, or perhaps HLT water, to blast pre rinse and preheat the FV. Then simply roll the cart to the FV, hook up a loop, and run for the recommended time. I have a few questions. Since I only have one pump in the loop, do you think that gravity will be enough to return the, uh, the bottom return water to the CIP pump without cavitating it? I assume I could just throttle the pump, uh, the pump outflow. Um, I'm going to answer some of these as we go. And then I have some notes at the end as well. Um, my big concern is uh, throttling the pump back. Okay. Um, you may need a return pump. I, I'm not sure what, how, how your setup will work. I'm not sure how much higher the bottom of your tank is set up above your cart. Uh, if they're equal or if the cart's higher, you, you might have an issue. So you might need a return pump. Okay. Um, but the, the main thing is, and the, the thing that's the first thing I think of when we talk about throttling back the pump, you want to make sure that you're hitting the appro appropriate flow rate. Okay. Because that's one of the key that, that, that turbulence that, that it's one of the key portions uh, of CIP. So, um, you want to make sure that you're not going under five feet per second for your liquid or 1.5 meters per second flow rate. Okay. So this doesn't mean that you have to have a flow rate meter in line all the time. Um, but I would maybe install one when you are, uh, just have water, uh, when you're just spinning something with water, um, and test that, uh, and maybe your, your speed on your, your variable speed drive for your pump, that might be a good way to make sure that you're hitting that. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, Jay continues, how often do you change the chemicals in your CIP skid? I would assume it depends on what you're cleaning and how well you pre-rinse, but is there some SOP you have for observation or do you go by titration only? Titration is the primary driver. All right. If it gets dirty by mistake, we'll dump it. Like if it, you know, if a bunch of dirty caustic running back, uh, we, we don't like to have nasty looking caustic in there. Um, but our setup has that inline water source, which lends itself to clean chemical, right? And also there's a little bit of flush and a little bit of refreshing of that chemical or dilution of the chemical every time we feed back, okay? So, um, you know, when, when I'm feeding hot chemical back to the uh, CIP skid for, for caustic, um, as soon as I feel that temperature start dropping, I can chase a little bit more city water in there. So I am diluting, but I'm also slowly, you know, getting, uh, you know, clean water back in that system too. Um, so, so that's one thing. Um, and, and, and our system does have this inline water feature that, that, that's very, very nice. Um, that, and I think it helps to lend itself to keep keeping uh, clean chemical. Um, but yes, we do lean primarily on titration as the primary driver. Do you ever hook up two things to be cleaned in parallel? For example, CIP outlet split with a T and two valves for time saving, or do you think that the pressure drop would ne negatively impact the effectiveness? Flow rate is king, so find out, okay? Um, you can do that, that's fine. I've seen people on Reddit uh, put some, you know, some real beasts together and they're cleaning everything at once, good, good for them. Flow rate is king though. All right, make sure that you're you're hitting the appropriate flow rate. He continues, for my system, how necessary do you think a flow uh, meter on the pump outlet would be? Uh, at least for trialing, like as we've been mentioning, at least for trialing these things and your different speed settings on your pump. And remember, different tanks and different hosing alignments are going to have different, uh, are going to generate different flow rates. 
So if you have 50 feet of hose in line as opposed or 10 feet of hose, there's going to be different levels of restriction, right? So um, yeah, check that stuff out. So if you're if you have to borrow one from a friend um, or you know do make that investment or something like that, I think it's I think it's pretty big. I think it's pretty big. What else? 